today, so I'm going to be quiet. All right, Rich, why don't you get started? Oh, good morning. Good morning, Rich. All right, we're going to do a the share screen here. I successfully did it earlier today, so let's see if I can continue to do it successfully. Is it working? Yes. All right. OK, so good morning. Uh, I'd just like to talk to you about the, the state of some of the equipment and, and the personnel for the garages. Um, Corey and I put together a small presentation here. Um, I'll just get started. Oh, did it work? OK, today we're going to talk about uh, just the staffing, um, upcoming retirements, uh, how the whole country or North America does with the uh, with mechanics, uh, the wages. Um, I've been working on recruitment, how we use other uh, vendors to help us keep up with the repairs, and we'll just review the whole thing. If anybody has any questions, just go ahead and look that up. So the fleet, the, the mechanics basically of all the, in all the garages, um, we take care of a lot of different equipment. And I just, you know, everybody knows about the plows and the, and the trucks and the peelers and stuff like that. But we're doing, we just do a ton of stuff. You know, we're doing buses, tow trucks, wood chippers. I mean, portable lights. We have hundreds or a hundred portable lights. You wouldn't know that um, these guys really have to, we really have to get these, we're trying to get these guys trained and, and they have been trained um, to work on all this stuff. Um, it's a lot to know. It would be like, uh, getting a new computer every time you uh, have another thing to type and having to start over because we own so many different pieces of equipment. Um, just wanted to give you a, an average of the age of our equipment. Um, this is the average in our in our uh, maintenance computer system. Um, the average age right around 10 years for most most of the uh, departments. Um, we do still maintain some very old equipment. Um, one of our tow trucks is a 1984. So that brings the average down a little bit, but we do have quite a few brand new equipment too. Um, quick, quick question, Rich. Do sure. we get reimbursed by the school district to work on their vehicles or how does that work? Well, they have their own garage. Okay. Uh, it's on 6th North over off of uh, off 11. So, so they have their own employees that they have their own employees. You'll see okay. that next. Yep, they have their own employees. They're actually in a different union. That the, they have three mechanics. Um, they have they have a pretty nice facility over there, um, and they take care. They don't. I say luckily we don't. They don't do buses. They only have five buses um, because we farm out all the buses, which is actually a good thing because the um, it's a lot to take care of buses. They have to be inspected, and when they get inspected, when a bus gets inspected, it takes about five hours. The state comes and inspects each one, um, and it's much better to have a vendor do that than us. So this is the uh, this is the average age. As you can see, the school does turn over things more often. The police department the police department tends to wear vehicles out a lot faster um, since they run them 24 hours. Um, just some of the equipment that we maintain. Um, these are, I'm just taking these averages from, from our maintenance uh, computer system. There's actually, there's actually more that we don't have. There's a lot of the small equipment we don't actually have in the system. We just do them in shop orders. I mean, we have some heavy, we have, you know, heavy trucks, vans. Um, the DPW garage does all of parks. That means we're doing snow blowers, weed whackers, uh, bobcats. I mean, Everything to maintain the DPW in the parks is, is goes through this garage here. Uh, the fire department, you know, they have the 50 big trucks plus, and every one of those trucks has um, two generator lights on it, and they all have, you know, cut saws on them. So we're maintaining all of these basically internal combustible engines, um, just hundreds of pieces of equipment. The police have a lot of cars. It's, it's a more, it's not as heavy duty, but it's still, these vehicles are running 24 hours. School district basically does their maintenance stuff and other stuff in the water department. The same thing with the small equipment. There's just as many small equipment as there is big excavator, excavator machines. And just because every truck has to have a pump and a, there's just so much equipment that uh, 
that we have to maintain. Uh, Rich, 1,400 vehicles, do you know how many have GPS sensors? Um, uh, well, the, the fire and the, and the police vehicles are GPS through the 911 system. So they're all they're all GPS, but they're all they're all done through the county. Um, the DPW vehicles, all the big heavy all the heavy vehicles have GPSs in them. Um, you know the dump trucks and the and the plows and all that. Uh, some of the smaller stuff, the smaller older stuff, we haven't gotten to, and the expense of it. Uh, most of our tractors, everything new right now, everything that comes in new gets a gets a GPS. Um, Councilor, I can get you the final figures on. I think it's water parks and DPW that we've focused a lot of the GPS units on, so I can get you the final figures on that too. I think on it's three. I think it's three around three fifty. Yeah, that's when you pull up Verizon. Okay. Um, but like I said, the police and fire are kept track up differently because they go through the the emergency system, so they're not in our the one we use at the water and DPW. Oh, Rich, uh, Rich Pat Pat Hogan here. Rich, you got you, so you're directly in charge of. DPW parks and water, correct? As far as fleet manager, or do you do police and fire too? I do police and fire too. So you're is, is there now? Is there somebody who works as a, in a supervisory position below you? Yeah, yeah. There's them? managers. There's supervisors for all the garages. Yeah, we have good. Well, we're going to get to that too. That'll that'll be coming up very soon. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm looking sort of the management stream as far as police and fire go with you. That's basically it. So that's all. I yeah, got. yeah. Keep on going. Okay. You'll see it in a, late, in a later slide. Oh, here we go. Now we're starting with the staffing. Um, the DPW has has the most staffing, but has the most openings. The heavy mechanics, obviously the diesel mechanics, those are the hardest to uh, the hardest to find. Uh, we have two autos. We have welders, a machinist. So we like we we turn our own drum, uh, brake drums. Some of our own brake drums. Um, better guys that uh, we split up. Now you got to remember in the DPW staffing, we have to split the staffing in the, in the winter because we have to run two shifts in the summer. We want to run one shift, so we have not in the winter we run two. Um, so we can cover for snow. Um, so out of our mechanics and the, and the people working in the in the DPW, um, our supervisor, the main supervisor right now, he's he's retiring in about a month, within a month. Um, and then we have three mechanics uh, that are in their 60s. It uh, will be going in the next 12 months. If they're planning on. And Luke, who runs the garage out here, he's he's wrapping things up right now. Rich, if uh, I could if I could if I could just chop in there. Um, sure. <laughs> one amusing aspect is that we have eight heavy equipment mechanics and five positions open. But four of them are retiring. If if we have eight positions and five of them are open, it seems we only have three mechanics. So how could four of them be retiring? No, no, they're they're going to be going next year. They're in their sixties. They're going to be they're still working. We have one gentleman out. He's, he's uh, he had uh, surgery. He should be back in a couple months. And then we're we're uh, we're we are uh, budgeted for thirteen heavy mechanics. They're, oh, I'm they're so that's yeah. not including the five that are open. I, I misunderstood. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So how do we how do we solve this? I've I've met with a lot of the people who've worked in the mechanics um, area, and it seems like we're we're chronically understaffed in this area. I mean, I, I guess you know obviously probably money is a solution, but is there is there uh, you know is there some you know medium road we can take to to uh, cover the shortfall. I mean, this seems to be a, a chronic one that we're we're really short, you know, short on in in this area. Well, it's not just us; it's it's everybody. It, and it, it, I'll go over more of that as the slides continue. Okay. So, um, let me go through the departments first. Um, the police staffing; they have uh, six mechanics working, three and three. They run they run two shifts. They still need a crew leader. They still need a mechanic, and their stock clerk just transferred out. And their garage supervisor right now is planning to go at the end. So there'll be a man. There'll be a supervisor there to cover. Uh, Water currently has two full-time mechanics, so they and they that's all they. Keep. 
keep on staff, the crew leader, <clears throat> been here over 30 years. Um, he's retiring in the next two months. He said he doesn't want to see another snowflake, so he'll be gone by October. Fire garage, their, their managers are there good, their supervisors. Uh, they do have one open position. And the school district has three full-time mechanics, and uh, they're, they're trying to add one. They haven't got there. So just for openings, uh, we have five at the DPW, three at the police garage, one at the fire, and one soon-to-be vacancy at the school district. They want to add it. And then out of that, including that, we're going to have three of the five garages, the manager, the supervisors are going to be leaving. So we have to fill those positions, which generally we fill from within. And that brings that brings us up to, you know, by the end of the year, we could, we could have 13 open positions in the city. To, to the mechanics. So that's what. So this is goes back to what you're asking about for the uh, filling the positions. Um, currently, I got this slide off. So there's 85,000 mechanic positions posted on Indeed right now. Um, this was this was an article that was done in April. Um, you can see the numbers. It, it's everybody knows. I mean, I came from 30 years of freight, and it's. Uh, this is, everybody knew this was coming. This is the direction we're going in. It's, you know, the people are not getting into the deep mechanics. It's just no new ones. Figure <clears throat> 67 diesel mechanics are needed to replace workers. 75,000 new technicians for the country. And this is even North America too. You see there's 85,000 for USA. There's 19,000 posted in, in, uh, in Canada. It's a North American problem. To, there's just not enough people that want to get into the. We say that American Trucking Association, there's going to be 200,000 positions need to be filled in the next 10 years. So our wages, uh, our wages are, are okay. Uh, the city, uh, they're 1852 to 2030. Uh, the school district, it's a different union. They pay 25 cents. A little bit more attractive there. Um, county's pretty much the same. I've met with their managers. Uh, the state, the county doesn't need any mechanics right now, but the state's always looking. Um, they need to pay a little more, and they're, they still have trouble finding. Uh, according to Indeed, our, our central New York average is 21 an hour, and the national average is 20. But uh, what's happening is people are just stealing people from each other because they're not. So places like Tracy's or Stadium or the, the, the big boys, they, they'll pay almost 30 bucks an hour. Um, we can't compete with those. We have, we have a, a really nice benefits package, but we can't compete with it with the, uh, you know, between the residency and, uh, and, the, and the pay. We're just not competing with the big guys. And like currently there's 79 ads for diesel mechanics and 127, including auto. Or at any given time, there's 125 ads. It, uh, and that's been like that for since the beginning of the year. There's been about a, over 120 ads for mechanics in, in, in central New York. Not indeed. Um, I've been out trying to um, do as best I can. I went to Central Tech, which are not opening, they're not opening this fall. Um, I had a really good conversation with them, maybe getting kids to push them to go to maybe college to get diesel. They're, they're, they're putting out auto mechanics um, uh, when they're 18, trying to maybe steer them into, you know, maybe we could get people to uh, intern at the city. Um, I went there two weeks ago. Um, they want me to sit in on their steering committee uh, meetings for the for Central Tech for their auto, auto program. I, at that meeting that I went to two weeks ago, they weren't going to open this fall. Just because of the way, and and um, some they, they lost their uh, teacher too. He went to because being a mechanic is uh, you, you can go anywhere you want pretty much. <clears throat> I talked to SUNY Morrisville and SUNY Alfred. Um, they start a class every year with about 30 students. Most of them don't even graduate because they get stolen after one year. 
um, they only graduate half that amount because after one year of diesel training, uh, any one of these com companies, Penn Detroit, they'll all take them. Uh, you need, you know, they'll all take a 20 year old kid who wants to be a diesel mechanic. So they only graduate about half the kids. Um, I've spoken with uh, BOCES, actually the gentleman in BOCES, actually I got, I saw the BOCES has their, uh, I saw their fall flyer and they're not offering a diesel, um, they're not offering offering a diesel uh, diesel mechanic um, program because they don't have teachers. They're starting a program with Tracy Road. They have a really nice classroom over there at Tracy Road, um, but they don't have an instructor, so they're not offering it. And they're going to offer it to high school and uh, and young adults or adults, um, I should say. They have an adult program they run out of Thompson Road, and they're trying to run a youth program out of Tracy Tracy Road equipment, but they they have no teachers. They can't instruct it, so they're not even offering it as well. Um, they would be willing to offer city employees, you know, like a four hour a day for six months to help with diesel training. We could work something out, but he still doesn't have a teacher. Um, I talked to the people, a couple people over at Bosey's are very, uh, very willing to help train mechanics because they're just, they're just aren't any to find. Um, this is what we do just to give you an idea. Um, last year, this is what we spent just having vendors do some of our repairs. Um, and now that we knew this year that, or this count, this uh, budgeted year, that we needed APOs to get, because we're going to need help fixing this equipment because we just don't have enough people. And people with the attrition and the people leaving, um, this is our APOs for this year down at the bottom. Um, and this is, you know, what, projected, I mean, uh, with the new vehicles, um, we'll get better, we're hoping, you know, I've had uh, um, the guys who give us the street sweepers, they're gonna do, they, they're gonna do training uh, the, with the new trucks, Max can come over and help us, although Mac, the new, the new plows are gonna have a, um, a service contract, so that'll be good too. But we just have to maintain this stuff. I, we don't have enough people to, maintain you know 100 heavy heavy equipment along with all, all the other stuff that uh, has been breaking that, that breaks down along with it you know we still have 100 pickup trucks to fix between here and uh, uh, parks and then there's you know all of them and that's about that, that that was what I have for so I what I'm looking for is just you know I, I, I'm really trying to be aggressive in networking I've and networking, like I said, I've even called, even got, I even got a set of tires in the winter and I was telling people I could give them jobs if they got laid off in the middle of COVID, but they were, I didn't even get that. Even even local shops weren't, weren't letting their mechanics go because they knew they would be busy again. So we're compounded because our vehicles are aging and there's nobody to fix them. So that's, Thanks, that's Rich. basically what I've been working on. Yeah, so I think, you know, our purpose here was to sort of share this situation with the council um you know rich and i have been having conversations to try and get creative in ways in which we can try to address the issue but we wanted to bring it to the council's attention to see if there were suggestions questions ideas and also to just raise awareness of the difficulty that we have you know when um you know and it, it's mission critical getting plows back on the road is obviously the most um common example that people point to, but obviously, you know, as demonstrated by all those departments, you know, vehicle maintenance is 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 key. So, um, so just open to any questions, suggestions um, that, that folks have uh, with the issues. Thanks again, Rich, for putting all that together. Yeah. Uh, so Corey and Rich, do you guys have like a, a one pager or something like that that we'd be able to give to people or share on social media or do something like that? Sure. Yeah, we could definitely looking to summarize what we just what we just presented, or well, well, working mean, to recruit people. To recruit people specifically. Yeah. So if there's something we could share with prospective candidates. Yeah, we could definitely put something together. Okay. Questions from the counselors? Uh, yes, uh, Rich. How much flexibility do you, do you have with your staff? I mean. Uh, if you were down a, a few uh, like critical, like say the winter months when we need plow somebody to fix plows, 
Could you pull people from police and fire? Do you have that um, ability? Uh, mechanic wise? The, mechanic wise, yeah, if I had to, but it's um what we do is like the fire is very generous and, and water is generous. Like what, what I've done is uh, actually not pull people, but given them things that we normally work on. Like the fire department is the fire garage has been doing all the mowers that are at uh, Burnett Park, you know, golf course. Because those those mowers are there's mowers are more than pickup trucks. So they're, they've been servicing them because I can't get them in here. I couldn't get them in here in the spring because there was no because of COVID. Um, and the water department's been doing um, Sunnycrest Golf Course. Just so what I've been doing is not necessarily sharing the mechanics and sharing the work. Um, it's trying to spread the workload out so that they're not all coming through here where we have so many more heavy vehicles that have to be worked on. Okay. So the police and fire mechanics, they have the same skills as your DPW mechanics as far as heavy equipment goes, right? Um, the water, water, and no, police, police just are just auto mechanics. They don't have okay. any. Okay, so not, they don't. They don't have diesel. I think they probably have a couple of diesel vehicles and they can, they can make it through. Um, but yeah, we all work together. All the, everybody has been very good. It's been actually been great. Uh, I can call any one of the garages if I have anybody has any trouble. And so do the manager, the supervisors can call each other. It's uh, it's very open about, you know, if we get behind. Um, before we had, we started getting new trucks in right when I started and uh, the fire department had had some really good uh, undercoating equip, you know, equipment to winterize the, uh, new, the new packers that came in and everything. So they were undercoating and, until we got it up to speed here at the DPW. And like I said, they're doing the mowers. So it's more, it's not more sharing the, um, the people themselves, it's just, it's the space, you know, they have a garage, they have a bay, like a piece of equipment in there that needs work. So they'll okay. do packers, they'll do, yeah, they'll do any, the water garage is a little smaller. Um, the police is, uh, they're busy. They have a lot of vehicles They're They, they never turn them off. They yeah. really, and it's the way there. they drive too, Rich. Only kidding. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, but but yeah, but they're very. We're all very good about sharing. Good. Coincidentally, Rich, um, I'm on the county IDA, and we just voted for uh, that expansion at Tracy. And I know they're going to be very aggressive as far as training goes. And you did mention that, so there was a possibility of some sort of partnership with them. You think or what? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get it like so. We like put a little, you know, city of Syracuse, you know, logo on this on one of the walls there. They have a really nice building. They're going to start doing. They just don't have, I mean, they don't they don't have instructors. I mean, you'd have to take a mechanic who's, who's some of these guys make pretty, you know, do pretty good working on heavy mechanics. And everybody knows that being a heavy mechanic right now, you're you can pretty much call your own shots because um, they're really in demand. And it's in there getting it's so much more complicated too. You know, I mean, the, the trucks are getting more computerized. Um, it, it, it's a it's getting to be a harder job. It's not just a, you know, it's not just turning a wrench anymore. You got to be able to plug them in. You got to get these guys training. When we're purchasing vehicles now, we're making sure it includes training for the for the drivers and the uh, and the shop. Because like street sweepers are unbelievable. So I think Rich is really laying a lot of the groundwork for kind of setting up long term solutions to to our issues, um, which I think. Is going to benefit us in the long run but obviously you know with vehicles there's also just the short and uh, more immediate term solutions so um but yeah rich rich has done a really great job in networking and building relationships both within the city and then outside of the city to try and see if we can leverage other folks resources to help us other questions from counselors well, so Corey, down the road, you and Rich will just give us a template of like short term solutions vis a vis long term solutions. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think Rich's recruitment, you know, reaching out to BOCES, reaching out to the CTE programs, reaching out to Tracy, I think, you know, long term, that's really going to help us. Um, you know, we're we're trying to get creative with some of the short term solutions, but we wanted to not just do it in a vacuum. We wanted to open up to see if the council had any suggestions or thoughts. I think, you know, obviously being able to share um, the need that we have on social media makes sense. You know, maybe we can try and get some folks that way, but, um, 
you know, as as Rich and I draft some things that we ideas for short term solutions, we'll make sure to share them with the council, obviously, but we wanted to at least open up the conversation to to beyond just me and Rich. <laughs> Corey, the, the police and fire mechanics, they're not prone. They're not a, a part of the residency, right? I would. Or are they? I think they would be. I think it's just yeah. if you're actual police officers or if you're an actual firefighter, then mm -hmm. the residency requirement wouldn't. But, you know, I think CSOs and other people that work at the police department who are not police officers, I believe, still fall under the residency requirement. Yes, so they I think, do. The fire yeah, all, of, do. All, of our, all of our mechanics right now are, are subject to the residency requirement, which I know poses some challenges because especially with heavy duty equipment, oftentimes you build those skills by working on farm equipment and, and other types of vehicles, which is just not as um, not as common uh, for city residents. But yeah, they, they're all subject to it. Okay. Yeah. And even I, the colleges, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, no, go ahead, Rich. Even the colleges aren't that close. They're in rural areas. I mean, it's Morrisville. There's yeah. one at Coble Skill too, which is basically they're catering to the rural people. I mean, that's that's where the truck drivers and the mechanics come from. Um, yeah. People that, you know, aren't inclined to go to school for something else. Um, yeah. It, it, it's a hard, I'm trying to trying to create a short game and a long game. In the short game, you know, be creative with uh, hiring people and using vendors. In the long game, try to get into these schools. So we're an app, we're, a very viable option for them to think about when they come out of school. The people at Tracy's, the people at Bosey's, they, everything, everybody's been great. It's the need for the need for people that do mechanical things. Is fantastic. Yeah, Rich, I, I had a quick question, and and correct me if I'm if I'm uh, getting it wrong, but it, it seemed from your presentation that the bulk of the deficit that we're feeling, like it seemed like fire, seemed like it was short one position. And SPD was was short one or two, whereas DPW was short five. Um, why do we see more of a deficit uh, in DPW than the other departments? Is that an accurate assessment? And what why is that? And what it do we is. attribute that to? Um, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure why they were. I think a lot of them retired. There were a lot of older guys here before. I mean, it was it, it, we were five short when I got here. Um, I think that there's there's some loyalty at the police and fire. I know the fire have some family members that are, are part of it, so they like working on the fire equipment. Um, they're proud to work on the fire equipment. Not, not that that isn't here at the DPW. I think the DPW had an older group of, of uh, people working here, and a lot of them just retired. Okay. As for transferring in between, uh, I don't know that that happened a lot. I know a couple guys here did go out, but of course, and, and some of the guys here are from from uh, other departments. So I just think that overall, I think 20 years ago there was 20 mechanics. We actually had um, we had two sweeper mechanics that, that worked on the sweepers like all the time. They brought them in like every day, and they brought would bring one in every day because the sweepers are so complicated. Um, and I think just over the years, it's just something that we, did, we didn't aggressively go after as the guys retired. Um, it's just larger numbers, you know, bigger operation. I wouldn't attribute it to any single, any single thing going wrong here. The guys have pretty good camaraderie here, so they get along pretty well. And, and uh, when I first started, when I first started, I came here during when it was snowing hard, and it's all hands on deck. And they know the importance of what they're doing. Especially getting the snow off the streets. Everybody's excited to have some new trucks to work on this year, to, to, to clear it this year. It'd be great. Rich, I'm assuming that you you guys do some training there too, obviously. You used to, I mean, you bring somebody in and would you be able to certify them or, or get them certified and all that? Yes, there's, there's uh, like I said, we, we've been doing it with purchases, like the, the sweepers that are so complicated. Uh, we're we're making sure that they offer. They come in for eight hours. They're actually they're also coming in and training the uh, the operators um, with the new Max. Same thing. Um, I haven't done it with Tracy's and Westerns with the new Western stars that we just purchased, but 
yes, training is a big deal. Actually, I went to the county and got their whole, um, I got, I, the county shared with me all of their training materials for operators and mechanics. And I'm going to incorporate, trying to incorporate that more into, into the garage and, and our operators. Um, it's just a little bit of a slower process and something I'm working is there any uh do we have any kind of option with collaboration with the county if we really have a significant problem uh not right at the moment no i haven't done is that something you would talk about corey or would you put on your little sheet maybe <laughs> my my small to-do list yeah, yeah yeah no absolutely i mean i think you know i think to rich's credit i mean rich, would it be fair to say that training has increased I mean, that's one area that you identified when you started and training has certainly increased since you've been here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I think you're being humble that training was, uh, and Ann can probably attest to this as well, that, that you know, when Ann and Jeremy um, joined DPW and, and with Rich as well, that training was just something that had somewhat, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I'll just say that. And so I that's think putting it politely. Yes. And so I think Rich has really been helpful in that. And I, I agree, uh, Councilor Hogan, I think we need to continue the conversations with the county to see if they're able to partner with us on some of some of the training opportunities that they that they're able to provide their drivers. Right, Rich? Yes, I actually I went to the state. I visited the state training site, too, and they're partnering with the county on doing some plow training. Um, but it's one man training that, that we're not we're really not doing right now because our streets aren't the same as as theirs. The county's trying to go, or they're gone, they're probably almost all gone to from two man plow units to one. one. Um, and the state has quite a quite a training program for that. And the county's doing that with the state. Um, but that wasn't something we would want to do. I don't think we want to run our guys down some of these streets alone. Um, yeah. So I, mean, I didn't you talk about that. I mean, you mentioned loyalty. I remember, like, when I first started the city, almost everybody in that DPW garage was related to each other, it seemed like. I mean, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It was, like, it was like Appalachia. It's, it's I think it was the <laughs> I mean, yeah. one who I mean, after I, the Civil War. Yeah, it was, well, I'll tell you, it was close to I think they fought on the losing <laughs> side, too, but I mean, I'm a kid. But I mean, I, a lot I, of them had a last name Panic, and I think yeah, I know, I I know, and they all lived in the second council district too. So. <laughs> yeah, we're but, we're trying to we're trying to open it up a little bit. Well, I think it was good because I think Rich mentioned something about loyalty, and it used to be where, you know, the guys who work in the garage would say, you know, can you give my kid a job, and the kid would go in and then learn how to be a mechanic. Probably not as comprehensively as you're teaching them now, but. Yeah, uh, you know that was certainly sort of an advantage back in the prehistoric times. <laughs> I think a lot of kids want to sit at a computer. We're not; it's not as attractive to work in a shop for a lot of people. Um, we have some good guys. We have some good younger guys and some good and some good seasoned guys too. It's just we're not. Well, it's a national problem. I mean, it's not only us. Right. I know when that. Felonies. When the mayor met with the commissioner for New York State DOT, this was one of the issues that was raised, and she acknowledged that just uh, you know for the state just across the board, it's just a real it's a real challenge to try and attract mechanics. There's just so much competition for them right now. You know this. I mean, this sounds Pollyannish, but I mean, down the road, obviously, we would like to plug into Fowler and some sort of career counseling there, some sort of program. Absolutely. And make it more of a pipeline because obviously there are kids in that council, I mean, in that district that would probably have, could avail themselves of that and might even like it, you know. And there's a lot of computers and mecha yeah. heavy mechanics now anyway, so. Um, I'm considering a career switch, so I don't see why yeah. not. There you go. I wanted to chime in just, uh, Councillor Hogan, I think you make an excellent point. Um, my brother grew up in Marietta, went to Morrisville, he's a mechanic. He didn't want to live in the city of Syracuse. And so I think you're right. There's an existing pipeline at our local schools. Just we need to get those people interested in careers for the city. Okay, that's a good point, Commissioner. I would, I'm pro you guys coming up with your own solutions, but I would give feedback that I'm, I wouldn't want a solution that's um, residency waivers. I would rather do the hard work to, uh, 
build pathways for city residents, whether that means um, different opening positions that lead to higher level positions um, or internships or whatever it may be. And um, in general, the recruitment and outreach and even evaluating the pay. Um, but I wouldn't want to just give, I don't view residency waivers as free. I would just say that. They as what? As free. They're not free. They have a high cost. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I would just push you all to, you showed the number of employees and kind of the rates that they get paid. And then you showed the dollars that we spend sending equipment to other garages. So I would just keep an eye on that. Like the, I don't think the city's very good at looking at efficiency. So dollars per outcome, dollars per like output. So like what, how many, what kind of work do we get done for the money with the contractor, with the contracts and then what kind of work do we get done for the money internally? And just, uh, cause there's always the option to like push contract money back into the DPW pot to do it ourselves. So. Right. We just need people or the other right. way around. You can push one way or the other. You need people, but there's people. I mean, we'd be, we'd be happy to spend that money internally if we had folks to pay. Yeah. I mean, and, and I agree with you. The internship is, is the right way to go. And I think that's why Rich has been having discussions with the school district. I mean, that's, that's the way that we need to go. We need some homegrown talent. It's just that those, those types of programs take some time and, you know, within the next year or so we, we will continue to face this challenge, you know? Okay. Let me say it a little differently then. I think we shouldn't bother humdrumming about the residency. You should find solutions that work within that um, world. Yeah, that's that's okay. that's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's why we're here. We're... Amount, but I would just say, don't just stop humdrumming about it and just start looking for the solutions. Well, I don't think it's humdrumming. I think it's a realistic challenge that we face. And if you have any solutions, that's that's why we're here. Humdrum. Okay. Fair enough. La di da. Yeah. Well, that's why I went to the school district so that <clears throat> hopefully I can get, you know, kids coming out of there maybe somehow sponsor them to go to Morrisville. Right. In turn, for giving us some, you know, a couple of years service at the city, you know, maybe interning here and getting them interested in coming here out of Central Tech after after maybe they can go to Morrisville and get the, the diesel training. Um, that's why I wanted to meet with them and I'm going to continue to meet with them. They're just not opening this fall. It, it was the last time I talked to them, they weren't going to they weren't planning on opening this fall. They were going to try to shoot for it like December. Um, so that's that's in the works i'm going to work on that but that's more of a longer game um in short game trying to uh, uh i've been trying to just drum up and you know from anywhere i go everywhere i go that i have i talk to mechanics i tell them that we have openings there's there's, there's work here and in all and let's face it we don't know how, how what the covid's effect on the economy has played out either with the unemployment and all that there might be i know there were a lot of jobs open before covid but you never can tell what ha happened as far as the trucking concerns go what contracts dried up or who's out there looking for a job either so yeah we're hoping we're hoping that some folks will will be looking i worked with a lot of shops when i did uh when i was in freight before this and i've talked to those shops and let them know that um if there's if they slow down if there's i want their guys to come here so <clears throat> i use my little bit of my previous network too to try to just to let them know that there's a, there's opportunities here Senator i know you had a question um thank you first of all corey and rich i haven't met you rich but um thank you both for an excellent presentation and for thinking about this uh, both in terms of the short term and the art of the long view um so uh, 25 plus years ago, I worked at Morrisville and we were struggling for admissions. Um, and I went to Jerry Tracy. Uh, we were looking, first of all, we were looking for students, but we were, the diesel program was about to die out just because we couldn't uh, get students. So I went to Jerry Tracy and I used my love of baseball um, that both Corinne Driscoll and I have for the Yankees. Yeah. And um, we decided that the best thing we could do to both solve his problem 
and solve Morrisville's uh, problem, um, both in terms of the diesel program and admission, general admissions, was to develop uh, a, a pilot program where we would go into the rural communities where Morrisville traditionally um, would attract students from and bring the heavy duty equipment to those schools so that the kids could climb up on them. They could play with the things and, and figure out what, um, so if they had any particular interest. And uh, what traditionally colleges and universities do is they try to recruit when kids are senior juniors or seniors in high school. But we were trying to get into the, um, uh, not even the triple A, to get into the single A, getting down into the fifth and sixth grade levels to try to get these kids involved. And Jerry Tracy um, would underwrite a program for recruitment and scholarship and in internships because he had a need uh, way back then. Um, and so we were very successful in that um, enterprise. I shouldn't say very successful, or probably successful because if we were very successful, we would have still have that pipeline. But the fact of the matter is that that's what we have to do for the part of the long view. These kids in Syracuse, and forget the residency thing for a moment. The whole idea of, is explaining opportunities these kids are high, exposed to high tech in this day and age. So the, the technology, whether it be the computers or the equipment itself, we have to excite them and whet their appetites that this is something that's going to produce and, and fulfill their expectations um, from a career standpoint, from a security standpoint, from a financial standpoint, and also giving back something to the community in which they live. That's that's the program we need to develop, in my humble opinion. It will work. Yes, it will take some time to do, but we should do it. So how do we get there more quickly? It would seem to me, people like Jerry, and I don't know, Rich, if you've met Jerry yourself, he's a pretty yeah. ambitious guy. Um, and between Jerry and the county with Ryan McMahon and the mayor and yourself um, and others, um, and there are, uh, there are other auto shops in town who are struggling to get mechanics, even paying 25 and 30, $35 an hour. So the opportunity, we talk about poverty in Syracuse and Central New York, there's a real opportunity for a task force to be come together of some of these people, both in terms of government and, in, and uh, business, to really put a push on that says, you know what? It's like the, the old time, um, not burn dairy, but the burn, um, um, uh, 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 auto uh, tire place, hometown <coughs> line is mighty fine. So um, we we could do this, and I think there's a general interest, uh, and I think that the mayor and the county executive and and some of these uh, um, uh, private business people would come together. It's to everybody's advantage, and particularly to the kids that would ultimately have a long time future. Uh, of stability and financial reward. So I think that that really would be the route that we should go. And if that's something that, um, you know, I was involved in that in more so if there's a way that I can participate or contribute, I'm happy to do that. Um, but Jerry Tracy knows it well, and I think he would be excited about doing that. I'm sure the county executive would, certainly the mayor would. Um, is that something that you all are thinking about doing and realistically putting that together? I haven't thought about it that way. I mean, I just I just started picking up the phone and calling people. I mean, yeah, I, I, think it, I think it might make sense to kind of formalize. It sounds out of maroon from what you're talking about. I think we're totally on the same page. It's maybe approaching it in a more formal, structured way, some of the conversations that Rich, Rich is having. It sounds like it's a lot of the same partners, but maybe with a a more focused approach and and just a, blip, a bit more structure to the conversation um, to try and which helps I think in terms of accountability and goal setting too. I, I would agree with that and 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 I think that's um, essential. In addition to which, people like Jerry Tracy will put money behind this, and I think that that's the key um, is to get some additional funding from sources um, like him and other private businesses in the area. They all, we all have the problem, but there's a, there's a wonderful opportunity here, the, the rainbow effect. And so 
it would seem to me if they're asked and put together that they might create a fund uh, for this training so that, and the other possibility is, um, I know some of the diesel mechanics that retired from Morrisville, I haven't been in touch with them in, in a few years, obviously, but the fact of the matter is, it's probably some who are retired, who don't wanna work full time, but if there was this um, incentive fund for uh, recruitment and also for paying for training, and, and there was a way that both government and private business could contribute to this, I think we would, we would see that it, it would evolve uh, rather quickly in this formalized structure as you're suggesting, Corey. Sounds okay. good. Any other questions from Councilor? All right, so I guess, Corey, one of the takeaways, if you can help us uh, by putting together a one pager or something like that that we can share and try to get out in the community. Um, hopefully we can help with this recruitment that way. That'd be great. All right. I will right, well, thank you to both you and Rich, and um, talk to you later. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor. Thanks, you, Councilor. Okay. Thank you Thanks, Rich. Thanks, yep. Rich. Corey. Thank you.